Hi, this is Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and this video will show you how to build your own LED nightlight. Okay, let's start by talking about the components you're going to need to do this project. So if you have specific questions about what exactly to order, make sure you click the link either in the description below the video or at the end of the video, that'll take you to a page on our site that has links to the exact parts, but we're kind of gonna give a general overview here. First is the photoresistor. So this is the light sensor or the part of the circuit that detects light levels. These are also called LDRs for light dependent resistor or photo cell, depending on where you look. We have an LED. In this case, this is a super bright LED, depending on what vendor you look. These could also be called high efficiency LEDs or ultra bright LEDs. These are a lot brighter than your typical LED. So if you actually wanna use this to provide some illumination at night, you need something brighter than kind of your average little diffused LED that isn't really going to light up the room very much. We have a transistor. So this is what is going to take a control signal, and we'll talk about this next when we kind of look at the circuit diagram, and allows you to use the light level detected, turn the LED on and off. We have a resistor. This is going to go in series with your LED to prevent it from burning out. Again, we'll talk about that a little more with the circuit diagram. We have a potentiometer, which is an adjustable resistor. You can adjust it by turning this white knob. A couple little jumper wires are always handy. You probably have little bits of these laying around everywhere if you do electronics projects as a hobby. You're going to need either a solderless breadboard or a proto board. Um, if you're just starting out with electronics, definitely recommend going with the solderless breadboard. This makes prototyping and undoing things if you make a mistake a lot easier. If you don't know how to use a breadboard, Check out the links below, and we have a great breadboard tutorial that will kind of get you up to speed on what these are and how they work and how you build circuits with them. If you have a little more experience and you want to build something a little more permanent, then one of these little proto boards is great because you can solder off everything on there and make it a little sturdier and a little more compact. Finally, you're going to need a power supply. So the version I'm going to show in this video is battery powered. I have a 2 by AA battery pack here, which is kind of overkill. It's a little big and a little heavy, you know, my battery pack is actually bigger than the breadboard here, but that's just what I had laying around. You could go smaller with a 2 by AAA battery pack or even a coin cell battery. Or if you wanted to make this project a little more permanent and more similar to the types of plug-in night lights you can buy at the store, you could use a little USB wall plug like a cell phone charger, and then you'll need an adapter to get from the USB port out to the breadboard. So you could either cut a USB cable and have access to the wires or get one of these little USB plugs that has pins on the back that you could then plug into the breadboard. So again, that is an option if you would like to make a wall powered version. If you do that when working with these, it's perfectly safe to plug things in and work on the USB side because that is low voltage. It's only five volts. Don't mess with this end. Okay, don't don't pry the case off. Don't play with or try to solder anything to the prongs. This is the high voltage side that can kill you. Okay, so don't play with this side. Perfectly safe to plug your project into this side if you decide to do that. But again, the version I'm going to show in this video is just going to use the battery pack. Okay, now let's look at the schematic and talk a little bit about how this circuit works. Now, if you've never seen a circuit schematic before, this might not make any sense to you. So if you'd like to get started learning about that, you can definitely go to the link at the end of the video or in the description. And we have some resources where you can learn more about that. I'm not gonna explain everything in this video, if you don't care, you can just skip this part. If you just want to build it, you can go ahead and we'll show you how the circuit works and you don't have to worry about understanding this part. But if you are interested, you should watch this part. So let's ignore the right half of the diagram for a second. Don't worry about those symbols over there and just kind of look at the left part. What we've got here is the symbol for a battery, the symbol for our potentiometer. So it's this kind of normal resistor symbol with three terminals instead of two and a little arrow going in the middle. We can adjust that arrow, which changes the resistance value of this potentiometer, R1. And then we've got our photoresistor, which is another type of resistor. The symbol for the photoresistor is a resistor with a circle around it, and then these two little arrows coming in that kind of represent light hitting the photoresistor. So we can turn a knob to change this resistance, and the amount of light shining on this one changes this resistance, R2. Now, putting two resistors in series like this creates something called a voltage divider. And kind of like the name implies, a voltage divider divides a voltage. In this case, it takes an input voltage V in and divides it at this output point to some value V out. And that value V out depends on this equation. So it depends on V in 
and then some fraction that depends on the two resistances, R2 over R1 plus R2. And what we can see, if we look at that equation, kind of roughly looking at the limits, what happens when one of these resistances gets really, really big or really, really small? If R2 goes to zero, then the numerator of this fraction is zero. So no matter what V in is, then V out goes to zero. Okay, so that if R2, this resistance is very small, then that means this voltage gets pulled down to ground. That happens when a lot of light hits this photoresistor. So the photoresistor's resistance goes down when it's being hit by a lot of light. It goes up when it's in darkness. So that'll be important later. And then the other way around, if R2 gets really, really, really big, so almost infinity, much, much bigger than R1, then this fraction becomes almost 1. So in that case, V out is going to be equal to almost VN. Now, 0.999 VN, not exactly VN, but close enough. So when this resistance gets really, really high, this voltage gets much closer to this voltage up here. Okay, so we are changing this voltage. We're, we're assuming for that part that I left the potentiometer fixed, that I wasn't adjusting the potentiometer. And this voltage here depends on the amount of light hitting this resistor. Okay, now let's go over here and look at the right half of the circuit. What I've got here is the symbol for a MOSFET, which is a type of transistor. There are a lot of different type of transistors. Again, that goes way beyond what we're going to cover in this video. For now, you can just kind of take for granted that I picked a type of transistor called a MOSFET, and it has three terminals called the gate G, the drain D, and the source S. And how the MOSFET works is it's kind of like a, a control valve that depends on a voltage to let current flow. So the gate is the control, it accepts the voltage as an input, and that determines whether current is gonna flow from the drain to the source or not. It's a real thing, it's a little more complicated than that, but again, we're not gonna worry about it in this video. So I have my LED hooked up in series with the drain and the source, so when current flows through the drain to the source, current is also gonna flow through the LED, and the LED is gonna turn on. If you've worked with LEDs before, then you know that you usually need a current limiting resistor in series with your LED to prevent it from burning out, so that's what that resistor there is for. So again, ignoring the left half of the circuit, say I could just magically control the voltage at this point. If the voltage at the gate goes high, I'm gonna have current flow and the LED is gonna turn on. If the voltage at the gate goes low, no current is gonna flow and the LED is gonna turn off. So when I combine these, what I've got is the output of the voltage divider connected to the input of this part of the circuit, the gate here. And remember what we said about this voltage, it depends on the amount of light hitting the photoresistor. So when I have a lot of light hit the photoresistor, this voltage goes low, the gate is off, the LED is off. And for my night light, ultimately, you know, what I, what I care about is the light hitting and whether this LED is on or off. That, that's the behavior I want. When it's bright, it's daytime, the lights are in, in the room or on, whatever, a lot of light is hitting this, the LED will be off. The other way around, when it's dark, not a light of his is hitting this resistor, this resistance gets very high, this voltage gets high, the gate turns on, we get current through the LED. So again, at nighttime, when it's dark in your room, you want the LED to turn on. And that's how we get that behavior with no Arduino, no programming, no nothing, just kind of connecting two different circuits that serve to, can serve two independent purposes, but if you link them together, they can have that behavior that we want. Okay, so how do we actually go ahead and wire this? So here's where you're going to want to either pause the video or click on the link to the written instructions in the description, and that'll take you to a page where you can download this as an image. We have two different diagrams here. We have one that just shows kind of freeform wiring with the leads connected directly to each other. So this would be useful to you if you do want to just solder the leads together directly to make a compact little device, or if you want to use a proto board and figure out the layout yourself. And the second diagram here shows the layout on a breadboard. So if you're newer to electronics, the diagrams are confusing to you and you can't figure out how to wire everything, you can just follow this diagram exactly. But again, if you've never used a breadboard before, even that might not make a lot of sense. So it would definitely help if you looked at our breadboard tutorial before you went ahead to try and put this together. So go ahead, pause the video, get your parts, actually assemble the circuit. And then the next segment will show you how to use the circuit once it's assembled. Okay, now that I've got this assembled on a breadboard, let's talk a little bit about how it works and how you can adjust it. What I want is for this LED to turn on automatically when it gets dark in the room. And rather than getting up to turn my lights on and off, what I'm gonna do is simulate darkness just by covering the tip of the photoresistor with the tip of my finger. 
And you can see when I do that here, the LED isn't turning on at all. So that's, that's not what I want. And I can adjust this by turning the potentiometer. So right now I have it turned all the way in one direction. I'm gonna turn it all the way in the other direction. And now you can see my LED is always on, even though it's really bright in the room. There's no change when I switch from dark to light. So I don't want that either. So what I wanna do is find some nice middle ground where my LED is off when it's bright, and then it turns on when it gets dark. So depending on the light levels in your room and when exactly you want the LED to turn on, you kind of have some middle range on the potentiometer where you can fiddle with that. And if you go too far in one direction, it's always gonna be off. And if you go too far in the other direction, it's always gonna be on. So you can play with that to get it set to the light threshold that you want for the room you're gonna be using this in. So there you go. This circuit as built on the breadboard will be a functional nightlight. Obviously, if you wanna make this something a little more permanent and long-term, you'd probably wanna consider the wall power option I mentioned earlier. And if you have experience with soldering, solder it on a protoboard to make it a little sturdier instead of doing this on a breadboard. Especially if you're doing the project with kids, it could be a lot of fun to build a enclosure for the light. So here I just have a plastic cup, but you could use craft foam, cardboard, other arts and crafts supplies. If you have a 3D printer or access to one, this would be a great use for a 3D printer to build a custom little enclosure for the circuit. So here I just have a plastic cup with some googly eyes and I poked holes for the leads of the resistor, the photoresistor and the LED and just cram the circuit up inside the cup. Again, that one's on a solderless breadboard, but if I wanted that to be more sturdy and permanent, it would be better to do it on a proto board. So there you go. Again, if you have questions that weren't answered in this video, like about specific materials or how to calculate voltages and what resistor you need, click on the link at the end of this video or in the description below the video.